Well, this is a chance for me to see my good friend Nader Saidi, who teaches at UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, about Baha'i studies, the Iranian Baha'i community, these kinds of things. And of course, Nader is a author of many, many well-known books about the Baha'i faith, The Gate of the Heart. Uh, what's the other one? Millennium and, no, Logos, Logos and Civilization. civilization. Yes. Um, both of which are remarkable, groundbreaking books about the writings of the Bab and Baha'u'llah, respectively. Uh, very, very impressive books. Uh, actually, why don't I ask you about that? Can you tell us <laughs> how did you decide to write uh, a book about Baha'u'llah and then the write a book about the Bab? Tell us about that. Uh, well, the book about the Baha'u'llah came about uh, in sort of accidental ways. Uh, namely, uh, there was a time that there were so many discussions uh, taking place uh, through different discussion groups in internet. It was the beginning of internet discussions about the faith and uh, Baha'u'llah and so on. And I felt um, uh, that maybe a book which would talk about the worldview of Baha'u'llah, the writings of Baha'u'llah, uh, could be useful in that context, in that situation. Good idea. And, uh, um, and and for that reason, I started to write, and I wrote it in 40 days. It, 40 it was, days? Yes. And it was much longer than... It takes than, 40 days to read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fast, but then... Uh, and it was much longer than what it well, is now. Well, it wasn't now. 48 hours like the Agon. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, but, you know, when I write, the ideas already are shaped and yeah. formed and present in, in my mind. So, um, but of course, the act of writing is always itself creative, as you know. Yes. And so it brings new ideas and new thoughts that you didn't have it before. So the very act of writing creates new forms of consciousness and so on. But in general, uh, um, that... Uh, that went through reviews and revisions and so on, and, and that process made it a, a better work. And of course, because English is not my native language, uh, so I was helped uh, for uh, editing and the like. The, the book, um, Gate of the Heart, and the writings was, of the Bob. <clears throat> I wrote it uh, intentionally because I felt that although uh, the Baha'i community loves the Bab, but what we have about the Bab is mostly history. Right. Uh, and uh, scattered, you know, individual writings of the Bab, particularly commentary on the Surah of Joseph, sure. has been subject of lots of writing and discussions and, and so on. But overall, writings of the Bob, overall worldview of the Bob, um, was rarely addressed. Right. Um, scholars like Dennis McCune also have written a lot about the Bob and his writings, but they are either providing a list of the writings with some brief discussion of... Uh, Content. Of information in general, about when it was revealed or who was the addressee and mm -hmm and things like that, and very briefly something about the content, but it wasn't, again, systematic. Right. The emphasis was on the history of the life of the Bob. And, right. so. um, and I also felt that there was so much misunderstandings about yes, the Bob and the writings of the Bob, and the worldview of the Bob. Uh, for, for that reason, um, I, I felt that it would be a useful thing to do and um, and surprisingly, uh, this work, Gate of the Heart, was much, uh, uh, much warmly uh, received. was received. Sure. Yes, um, and uh, um, and and of course that was just a beginning mm -hmm. for for future works. And I'm I'm very happy that there are lots of scholars who are working on these areas now. Yeah. Well, I read The Gate of the Heart very, very carefully because I was asked to do a public, a, an official review of it. I have like 
20 pages of tiny notes <laughs> that I attached to the back of my copy, in fact. And for me, first of all, you, you answered many of the questions that had been kind of out there about the Bob, like, isn't he disorganized and doesn't know grammar? I mean, you explained these things. You gave an explanation of his raison d'etre for writing. You gave um, a clear, clear understanding of the symbolism, the depth of the symbolism. And for these kinds of things, I think this was an immensely valuable discovery for the Baha'i community to understand these things, especially people can't read yes. the originals. Yes. It really helps to lay out what the Bob was trying to do. And now people are building on it, I think, from yeah. some of the, what I've seen, some Todd Lawson's works, for example. Yes, Todd Lawson is wonderful, <laughs> and his, his works, I, I always have loved his, his works and are very creative. Um, it was, you know, one of the um, uh, uh, interesting things for me was that there is a trend in Baha'i community that um, some Baha'is assume that because the laws of the Bayan, laws of the Bab are abrogated and replaced by the laws of Baha'u'llah, that means that really nothing of the writings of the Bab is relevant to the Baha'i faith right. or that we don't have to read them. Right. Um, and even sometimes superficial references to a statement of the Bab that if you read you know, one verse of the Promise one is better to read than uh, the whole, the entire Bayan is not understood and is interpreted that this is a literal statement. Right. Um, what the Bob, of course, is saying is that the purpose of all past revelations is recognition of the new revelation. So, uh, reading one sentence of the new revelation with recognition, and the yes. recognition of that is better than reading the entire Bayan without recognizing the, the promised one. And it doesn't mean what sometimes falsely is understood, that it means that you should not read the previous writings of, of previous revelations and so on. So um, I think one of the things that Gate uh, does is to show that how much the um, philosophy, the theology, the, the mystical ideas, symbolism, uh, concepts, worldviews of the Bab are uh, integral elements of, of Baha'u'llah's writings. Right. And how much we can understand right. writings of Baha'u'llah much better yes. if you are familiar with, with, uh, yes. with the writings of, of the Bab. Yes. And so really there are twin revelations yes. and uh, they have to be approached in that way. It struck me in, in many ways, if you think of the writings of Baha'u'llah as to some extent have sort of layers or strata of increasingly complicated social teachings and more elaborate things, that the Bab helps provide the foundation of the, the metaphysics, Complete. the nature of God, the nature of manifestations, the nature of revelation, the nature of human beings, and that Baha'u'llah assumed much of that. That, after all, yes. doesn't get abrogated. That's a revelation of truth. And then Baha'u'llah built on it. Yes. That's my impression from the Gate of the Heart in particular. Yes, uh, and that is completely <laughs> accurate. And you know, many times, for example, we have 95 times that we should say Allahu Abha. And the Baha'is always want the why 95 times. Uh, and Baha'u'llah has never said that explicitly. The reason is that anybody who was familiar with the writings of the Bab knew that. Because uh -huh. in the Persian Bayan, frequently the Bab discusses that the word Lillah, which means for the sake of God, which for him, all acts should be done for the sake of God. This is the fundamental philosophical principle of ethics of the Bab, which is confirmed in the Baha'i writings all the time as well. The word Lillah, which means for the sake of God, in numerical value of alphabetical uh, well, values and so on, is equal to 95. And so the Bab all the time says that uh, his laws and the symbolism of his laws would not exceed 95. For instance, the law of diary, there is a diary that, uh, that the maximum amount of diary is 95. It cannot exceed that. Mm. And, uh, he, and his argument is that since all his action, all actions should be done for the sake of God, even, uh, you know, like the Baha'i principles, when 
marriage is going to be contracted, male and female should say one statement, mm -hmm. very we abide by the will of God. This word, we abide by, there is Allah, we abide by the will of God, uh -huh. um, is the word that, um, that is Allah, both in, in terms of Aqdas and in terms of a slightly different version of that in the Bayan. But the main concept is Allah, that mm -hmm. Even this act of voluntary act of marriage contract between two souls is done for the sake of God. And so God is present in this and it right. turns that into a covenant. Right. That's not just individual right. individualistic event. So because all acts should be for the sake of God, 95 becomes symbol of that to remind me that all our actions should be for the sake of God. So any, anyway, um, that's a reason, That's and the Baha'is don't know that, and they they are sometimes confused and ask this person and that person, and they say, we don't... Well, the easy answer is to go back and to look at the writings of the Bab. Yes, and I'm now sure. they'll know, because we're broadcasting <laughs> it live, and we'll record it, and we'll put yes. it up. You see, five minutes is not difficult to do yeah, at all. True. We can talk quite easily. Yeah. Now, let's move on a little bit and talk about UCLA and what you're doing at the, uh, at the uh, University of California in Los Angeles. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, this is the sixth year that I'm teaching at UCLA. Um, I teach within uh, Iranian studies, which is itself part of the bigger uh, program um, uh, department of Near Eastern Languages and Cultures. And uh, uh, the way it is uh, uh, organized is that I teach every year three different courses about the faith. Um, the first course I is focused on the history. Uh, the second one is focused on the scripture, worldview, and so on. And the third one is about 20th century Iran and the Baha'i. So it is the interaction of Iranian politics, intellectual developments, culture, and so on within a, a 20th century and the parallel events in the Baha'i um, uh, community movement and the interaction of the two and the mutual uh, effects uh, uh, there. So um, what was interesting to me, which I could not predict that, is the level of enthusiasm mm -hmm. and reception, mm -hmm. warm reception of the students Fantastic. and also my colleagues Fantastic. of this. Uh, and you see in all my classes that after a week or two, students go through a trans transformation. Uh -huh. Vast majority of my students, of course, are not non-Baha'i sure. right now. My present class, um, I have 50 students, uh, and I had to limit that right. because Cap. more, yes, yeah. want to, to take it, but the quality of the course declines when it is too many people. Yes. And um, two of them are Baha'is, the 48 are non-Baha'is. And, you know, in the first week or the second week, they are cautious, mm -hmm. they are not sure, and so on. But then you see that they feel that the atmosphere of class uh, and the content of the class and discussions is not um, intended to impose one particular prejudice as opposed right. to other prejudices, right. but emphasize harmony and unity and it is respectful, all religions and all people love, mm -hmm. peace and so And a new sense of identity, because almost all my students, I see them, whether they are from Iranian background or American, mm -hmm. left or right and so on, religious or not, they have all some form of identity confusion. Uh -huh. And uh, yes. universities are actually enhance mm -hmm. this, this confusion and so on. But through these courses, they develop a new sense of true identity, which is what the Baha'i faith says all the time, that you are a spiritual sure. being. And so, diversity of differences that we have become beautiful because they are in the context of the essential nature, mm -hmm. spiritual nature of all of us, which is one and the same. And so mm -hmm. the message is communication and love and unity and the like, rather than concept of diversity becomes an occasion for mutual alienation, right. mutual estrangement, which is right. what we have right now. Right. And so uh, the, as the class uh, progresses, the, I see that the students become happy. I mean, there is an atmosphere of happiness, of peace in the class and so on. And of course, they tell the other students, and that's why we have so many uh, 
uh, no, demand small. for these classes. Yeah. So it's it's a sort of, uh, you know, I'm not in the habit of saying confirmations and things like that, but really what I have seen in these six years, it's hard not to say that there is some sort of divine confirmation <laughs> happening there. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Nader, for this time. We're really grateful that you've been able to give us a little bit of a glimpse into the books, which I always, there's always fascinating stories to tell about writing books and the, the passion of the topic will always come through when you talk to someone about what they've written. Yeah. And I'm so glad that the courses are so successful at UCLA and you've really found a passion for teaching the faith. I'm envious of you there. So thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Appreciate and I'm it. glad Thanks that for... uh, Wilmet Institute is uh, existing and it's of such high quality. And uh, uh, and I know that you in particular are responsible for this. This is a central institution event in the history of the faith and very important. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there we go. Thanks, that's it.